campsite, we've pretty much all seen it, whether you've been walking by a park or at the beach where there happens to be some calisthenics equipment, or whether you've been mindlessly scrolling through Instagram or watched a particular YouTube compilation video, we've pretty much all seen someone do not a muscle up, not a front lever, not a one arm pull up, but just an incredibly slick, regular pull up. But it's not really a regular pull up, is it? What I'm talking about is specifically people doing really high pull ups. Now some of these guys are absolutely crazy, doing pull ups to below their waistline, Looks absolutely awesome, and if you're anything like me, you wonder how do these people actually pull it off? Well, after having experienced quite a few improvements with my own high pull-up, I figured I'd share the exercises that I've used and discuss their effectiveness in a training program. So let's get started. So without any further ado, let's get into the exercises, starting off with number one, which is seated L-sit pull-ups. The main principle with this exercise and most of the exercises I'll be talking about today, frankly, is that you want to start from as much of a standstill position as possible and then really explode up with as much force as you've got. So for this, you start seated on the ground and without any momentum or any extra jump or little kick or whatever it might be at the start, you just want to be seated at the ground, arms at a bar, so use those sort of dip, parallel dip bars if you've got them nearby. And you want to, from complete standstill, you want to use as much force as you can to pull up as high as you can with as much force as possible. I've also seen people make videos about the L-sit pull-up, not seated from the ground necessarily, but hanging from a regular bar, as they're supposed to be quite good in terms of activating your scapulas in a different way than what you do with a regular pull-up, and it sort of changes the, slightly changes the center of gravity, and so challenges your body in a different way. And personally, I haven't really tested these out too much, but my thoughts on it would be that as long as you're starting from a position which is quite neutral, quite standstill, and you engage a lot, a lot of force and really put a lot of effort into getting high up on the bar from that standstill position, you'll get quite good benefits in terms of yielding a higher pull-up. But in terms of just seated L-sit pull-ups, this is probably the number one exercise I've used in order to get higher pull-ups. So start seated on the ground and engage as much of your force, as much as your power as you can into getting higher up on the bar. It might be a bit slow at times, but trust me, this will really, really build up that explosivity and strength. Another exercise I've done consistently on this journey towards higher pull-ups is weighted pull-ups. And although they haven't necessarily been specifically targeted for getting a higher pull-up, I definitely think they have contributed. The more weight you're able to lift on a general pull-up, the more force you'll be able to produce so although there might be a bit of a learning curve towards actually applying it towards a specifically higher pull-up, I definitely think having a stronger pull-up is a good goal. Even though there might not be a direct correlation between a weighted pull-up and how high you might be able to get on the bar, I generally think this is because of how people train it. I think the more strength you have, the more strength you have available to sort of transform into that explosive and dynamic power on the bar. So I think the higher of a weighted pull-up you've got, the easier it's going to be to get a high pull-up if you just implement exercises that specifically focus that strength towards a more dynamic, explosive approach. So doing weighted pull-ups is absolutely a good step to take in order to build that base strength, which you later can apply in terms of more standstill to 100% effort into that single rep type of exercises. Another exercise I'd use is simply doing explosive pull-ups. So for this, I'd start in a fully extended position below the bar and really try to pull myself up as hard and as fast as I possibly could. You want to get as high up as you can in as short amount of time as possible. That's the mindset I use when I go into these, and this has helped quite much. This is the actual exercise you'd use, the actual movement you'd use when you perform a high pull-up. It is a high pull-up, right? But you really want to challenge that and bring it as high up as you possibly can. Only thing I can say for this, keep it to low rep count. You don't want to do too many reps of this because, well, if you are, then you're using too little strength on each rep. So the main thing here is you want to channel as much energy into each rep as you can. Again, starting from pretty much a standstill and just exploding up towards that bar. And trust me, give it some time. And in combination with the other exercises, you'll start to see slowly, slowly getting higher and higher up on that bar. Now, the final exercise I've got is band assisted high pull-ups or band assisted explosive pull-ups. The idea behind this is that you do the exact same thing as you did just for regular explosive pull-ups but now with a band you don't even need a light one like if you're able to do quite high pull-ups 
I'd still recommend doing like a medium thickness band and this exercise would be I'd, I'd say mostly for getting a feel of how it is to get that high up above the bar to sort of give your mind a bit of an idea of how it is to actually pull up that high and also a side benefit it's not, not generally just a side benefit, but something that's actually, when I'm thinking about it, quite good. On the way down, if you really try to focus on controlling the descent, you feel it quite well in your forearms. It seems to be a good way to build forearm strength, which is nice for, you know, any pulling exercise, any sort of pulling movement, but actually really comes in handy when you want to get very high up above the bar just using a pull-up. So this shouldn't, I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't, doesn't really matter. I mean, what I've found from my experience is that this doesn't necessarily have to be a main driver in order to see good results with your pull up, with your high pull up, but I'd say it can be a good way to sort of just sprinkle in a bit of variety, try a few repetitions every couple of sessions and just focus on that descent to build that forearm strength and to get a feel for how it is to get that high up above the bar. So those are pretty much the four exercises that I've used in order to get a higher pull up. And I think it's a good combination of things, doing weighted pull-ups to increase strength, doing L-sit, seated L-sit pull-ups, and explosive pull-ups to sort of transfer that strength into explosive pulling power. Well, transfer might sound like a sort of weird term, but if you have a lot of strength, that doesn't necessarily transfer to that dynamic explosivity. So you need a few exercises for your mind to sort of get in the right headspace or to, for you to get in the right headspace for you to get in sort of the right way of thinking about it in order to actually apply it on the bar. So it's a bit of a strange thing, but it's sort of like a muscle up. Most people have a lot of strength and they're able to do it, but they can't really do a muscle up because of sort of a mind body disconnect there. And I think it's similar with high pull ups, maybe not as evident because, well, it's sort of very similar movement to the pull up. You just want to get higher on the bar. But I, f I feel like it's kind of the same thing. So even though you might have a lot of strength, doing your sort of slow rep with like a lot of weight around your waist isn't necessarily the same as just pulling to your waist or to your uh, to your belly button or to below like your nipple line. So I'd say it's kind of a similar thing. You want to transfer that strength into dynamic power, which is done through the, at least in my case, through the seated L sit and through the explosive pull up. And then throwing a few banded explosive pull-ups in there to just get a feel of how it is to get that high, to sort of get your mind into the right mode of thinking in order to have an idea of where you want to go with the movement, at least in like insane strength scenarios. And also to gain a few benefits on the way down, on the descent, in terms of having your forearm sort of control the descent in the best way possible to like the highest degree. So just sit there like when you get to the top just try to really just squeeze your arms and just try to prevent that descent as much as possible obviously not doable right but you can at least get a bit of gains in those forearms so there you have it if you like this video you might like this one somewhere on screen right now about how to increase your rep count for pull-ups how to do more pull-ups in a single set but without further ado Thanks for watching and as always remember to keep on training, train what you love and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.